So you would have seen my fortune teller. Now, I've had a lot of questions about how I do it, how I can control electronics and motors using this little programmable micro bit board. Well, I thought I'd do a little tutorial on how we hack toys or how I hack uh, old electronic toys. For example, Zoltar's face, the eyes, they're actually an, an old Furby. So I haven't built it from scratch. I've taken some existing um, eyes, i.e. in the Furby, and controlled them using one of these. So I thought I'd do a little tutorial on how we can hack simple electronic children's toys. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so let's assume our toy, whatever it is, has a motor. Okay, and this is the motor we want to control with our micro bit. Now, the problem is that in the toy, you're probably going to get an on off switch. Okay, an on off switch um, that just basically switches the motor on and off. Uh, and we have to manually flick that switch to get it to work. Now, the switching of the switch, um, we want to be handled by the micro bit. And that's all that my uh, micro bit in my Zoltar machine does. It basically mimics the on off switch of the Furby's facial features. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to use this little micro bit to take control of this little propeller that we are imagining is in the toy we want to control. OK, so let's get started. What do we need to be able to do this? Well, we need a few ingredients. We need the micro bit, obviously. Um, we probably need a little breadboard. OK, this is a, a bigger than what we actually need, but we are actually going to need one nonetheless. And the um, main ingredient is this, this little tip 120 transistor. So this acts as like a little gateway. So <laughs> it uh, breaks the uh, current going to the motor and the micro bit will, will tell the tip 120 to let the power through or not, as the case may be. Okay, so I'm just going to park that there for the time being. Uh, we also need a little diode, as we'll explain later, and finally a little 1K resistor, like so. And I'll put all the parts listed uh, in this introduction in the description. This is a very, very low cost solution, by the way, which is why I love it so much. OK, so with your breadboard, you then need to insert your tip 120, like so. The next thing you're going to do is just look at what we've inserted. And notice there's three feet going in. OK, three feet. I'm going to label them one, two and three, going from left to right on your screen. Feet one, two and three. OK, we need to bridge one and uh, two and three with our diode. So all I'm doing is just bending my diode like so. And just bridging the gap between feet two and three like so. OK, can we see that? OK, yep, yeah, like that. Yep. Yeah. Where the resistor comes in is we basically bend it like so. And we put it along foot number. Whoa, this is where it gets really fiddly. Bear with. There we go. Like so. So you're sort of looking at a setup like that. Okay. Sort of looking at a bit of a setup like that. Now, foot number one. Or prong number one of them as we got here uh, this is the signal so this is the signal coming from the micro bit okay so what we're going to need is a signal wire so I'm just going to grab one 
like so, push it into the breadboard like so, and eventually this end here will get connected to our micro bit. The other two are go, uh, the middle one goes to the motor. Okay, so what I'm going to do, grab another wire like so, pop it in at foot number two, and this one goes to the motor. Right, okay, so mo the motor is quite interesting. OK, because obviously <laughs> when we're developing with a bit of a breadboard and there's no soldering required, we need to somehow hook this up with that. So what I would recommend that you get, but not but it's not a necessity, crocodile clips. They make my life so much easier when I'm trying out ideas. So I'm just going to clip one end to the motor, one end to the wire on number two, on leg number two of our transistor. Okay, now that leaves this spare wire here on our motor. Now what that hap what, where that goes is to the battery. Okay, so we're going to connect it up to the battery like so. I'm just going to do a bodge job. <laughs> Not the cleanest, but there you go. Okay, and then you should have one wire remaining from your battery pack and this is what goes back into your breadboard on foot number three. OK, so what we're going to do, grab another wire, pop it in. And again, we've got that problem where we can't really connect them up. So what I'm going to do, grab some more crocodile clips, clip one to that wire and clip one. To the battery wire. We're nearly there. We are nearly there. We are nearly there. Okay. Also coming off foot number three is the ground which we are going to connect to the micro bit. So again, going to need another wire. Let's see if I can find one. Okay. Pop it in there like so. OK, so now you should be left with two wires that need connecting to the micro bit, one that goes to the ground and one that goes to the pin, one of the pins. And I'm going to use pin zero on mine. OK. Once again, our good friends, the crocodile clips, we're going to clip one to the wire, connect it to the ground. Like so like we do. And once again, final crocodile clip. This is the signal wire from our breadboard and it goes to pin zero, like so. OK, there are a lot of wires. And once once you've got something working, you can then reduce the length of these wires so that um, it's a lot neater and a lot cleaner. Now, let's just recap. We have our micro bit. Now, the micro bit uses what we've constructed on our breadboard to break the circuit between the battery and our motor. When our transistor receives a signal from pin zero, it opens the gate, allows the current to flow activating the motor and it won't stop that motor until it receives another or, or a lack of signal from pin one. So, so um, as long as the micro bit is outputting a sing signal from pin zero, it'll keep that gate open and keep the power flowing. Once it stops that signal, the, gates, the gate shuts and the circuit is broken and the motor in theory should stop. Outputting a signal from one of your pins on the micro bit, we use a block called digital write. Now, digital write is basically mimicking the manual switching on and off of a switch that we spoke about earlier. 
there's nothing in between. We can't partially send it a little signal to drip feed a bit of power to the motor to make it go slow. It's either on or off, unfortunately. And that's what I'm going to use in this setup. So I'm going to digital pin zero, digital pin right one to switch it on, leave it on for a few seconds, and then I'm just going to switch it off and switch it off and keep it off for a few seconds before the whole process repeats again. So by the end of this exercise, we should have a propeller that is activated and then deactivated periodic periodically. OK, so what blocks do we need in order to program this micro bit? Well, let's have a look. Right, OK, so here we are in the blocks and I am using the forever loop and in there I'm going to put our digital right pin. So this is basically activating or deactivating a pin on the micro bit board. So I'm using pin zero and a value of zero. And you see I'm setting pin zero to zero that's off and I'm going to add in a pause so it remains off for let's let's say three seconds so 3000 milliseconds so it's going to remain off for three seconds before I go back in grab another another digital right set it to one this time so this is on so it's like a binary switch off and on zero and one so I'm going to switch it on and again add in a pause so it remains on for a certain amount of time and probably let's I don't know let's go with five seconds so it's going to be off for three on for five seconds okay and you can see in the emulator on the left that um, you can see that the pin is set to a value of one when it's on and it discolors and you can see it's off and it goes back to its normal color so on and off OK, so as you can see, we have a propeller that's activated and then switches off and then waits a few seconds and then switches back on. So the potential for this is huge. I mean, there is a built in thermometer into the micro bit. Maybe we could activate the propeller when it goes above a certain temperature to cool us down, for example. Or you just want to take control of an old electronic children's toy like I have in terms of um, the Furby in my Zoltan machine. Anyway, I'll give you a list of um, materials, um, ingredients, components to use um, that I've used in this tutorial. And hopefully it encourages you to um, experiment a bit with electronics. My batteries are going flat, so I have to sort of nudge the propeller occasionally just to get it going. <laughs> Because nothing runs smoothly when, when you're making videos. I'm trying to think of an easy way to show you how all this is wired up. And what I've done, I think, uh, would be best if, we, if I just show you this. Okay, so what you can do, you can pause the video and have a look. Um, have a look at how everything is assembled. Come on, let's get the propeller working. There we go. So as you can see, I've done a little diagram about how I've assembled everything. <laughs> My batteries are really going flat. Um, and yeah, just pause the video and have a look and it'll point you in the right direction as how to assemble your breadboard. Anyway, I hope you find this useful and I hope it sort of unlocks a bit more creativity when it comes to programming with the micro bit. Anyway, Thanks for stopping by the workshop. I hope you find this useful. See you next time.